Good evening and thank you for joining us this evening at our city council meeting. We'll go ahead and get started. Shawnee, could you please call the roll? Adamson? Here. Gray? Cheatham? Here. Johnston? Here. Lorick? Here. Manan? Here. Vlad? Here. Thank you. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump to agenda item number two is the invocation which will be offered by Marianne Forrest from HS Joshua Ministries. Mr. Mayor, you missed the pledge. Oh, thank you very much. I apologize if you'd please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, after which we will have an invocation. <laughs> Tell us something. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. It's precious to you. We just lift up this time to you, Lord, and you have a plan. You have a plan for our community. You have a plan for each of our leaders. You have a plan for each one of the people in this room. And I'm just asking that the Spirit of God would just move before them. I'm asking for comfort. I'm asking for Psalms 91, hedge of protection to be around each one of them. Lord, that your plans will come to pass, that you will continue to guide them and lead them and give them wisdom. I thank you for our leadership. I thank you for the plans that are unfolding. I thank you for our community. I lift up each one of the individuals in this room, and I ask for Psalms 91, hedge of protection to be around each one of them as well. I'm just asking for your will to be accomplished. I ask for the spirit of peace, the spirit of wisdom, and everything that is necessary for your plans for the community of Pocatello to come to pass according to your will. We just lift all of this up in your mighty name as we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Okay, we will move on to agenda. I felt like there was something missing in that, so doesn't surprise me I missed it. Agenda item number three is a consent agenda. The following business items may be approved by one motion and a vote. If any one member of the council so desires, any matter listed can be moved to a separate agenda item. A, minutes. Council may wish to waive the oral reading of the minutes and approve the minutes from the April 12, 2018 study session, budget development meeting, clarification meeting, and regular city council meetings of May 3, 2018. Fire union quarterly update of May 3, 2018. Study session and budget development meetings of May 10, 2018. The budget development meeting of police budget development meeting and police union quarterly update of May 17, 2018 and the clarification and regular city council meetings of May 17, 2018. B, payroll and material claims. Council may wish to consider payroll and material claims for the month of May 2018. Good evening, Ashley. How are you? Good, thank you. Ashley Walsh, Senior Accountant. Tonight I'm presenting the payroll and claims report for May 2018. Total payroll and material claims for the month were $6,752,446. Payroll related claims were $3,557,961. We had a decrease in full-time employees of three, an increase in part-time employees, 14, seasonal employees, an increase of 45 for a total increase for the month of 56. So we have a total employee count right now of 769 employees. Vendor claims for the month were $3,194,486. And the large vendor claims, we had planned and engineered construction for $320,761 for WPC, um, the Sanitary Sewer Rehab, um, a CIPP contractor payment. We also had Core and Main, formerly HD Supply, for $292,500. $351 for water, for meters, ductile iron, etc. Good Motor Inc., $192,741 for police. They purchased six vehicles. Hydro Specialties Company, $169,652 for the water department to purchase electronic radio transmitters. And Rush Truck SLC, $160,744 for sanitation to purchase a 2019 International 7600. These vendor claims explain 88.75% of all the vendor claims for the month of May. 
and on the back of the report, I've given you information on our May purchase card activity. We had 1,405 transactions for a total dollar amount of $311,845, and we had 243 employees use our cards for the month. We also had seven purchase agents with monthly totals greater than $10,000, and the types of expenditures are listed for your review. This completes my review. Any questions for Ashley? Did Thank that, you. Has that oh. rush truck sanitation been delivered? It's, it's okay. That's all I want. Thanks. Thank Super, thank you. We'll move to agenda item C, library board reappointment. Council may wish to confirm the reappointment of Catherine Way to continue her service as a member of the library board. Ms. Way's term will begin July 1, 2018 and expire July 1, 2023. D, Pocatello Arts Council appointment. Council may wish to confirm the mayor's appointment of Sherry <coughs> Deans Free Swanson to serve as a member of the Pocatello Arts Council, replacing uh, D Diana Livingston Friedley, who resigned. Dr. Deans Free Swanson's term will begin June 8, 2018, and will expire June 18, 2021. E, surplus direct declaration of a 1998 GMC truck parks. Council may wish to accept recommendations of staff and declare an inoperable 1998 GMC pickup truck as surplus and approve the sale of the sale to Pacific Recycling. The truck was slated for auction after a 2018 maintenance season, but was involved in an accident. The repair cost would exceed the value of the vehicle. The truck has no auction value and is not usable in any other department. F, council decision, conditional use permit for Digital Skylines, Inc. Council may wish to adopt this decision approving the conditional use permit for Digital Skylines, Inc. on behalf of Verizon Wireless for installation of a 50-foot monopole cellular tower and supporting equipment. Said tower will be located adjacent to I-15 and the East Clark off-ramp. G, <coughs> Council Decision Hawthorne Meadows Subdivision Short Plat. Council may wish to adopt this decision approving a short plat for Hawthorne for Hawthorne Meadows Subdivision, which subdivides approximately 3.20 acres of land into two residential lots subject to conditions. The property is located south of Quinn Road and east of Hawthorne Road. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Cheatman. I'd move to approve the consent agenda, agenda item number three. I'll second that. We have a motion by Cheatham and a second by Johnston. Shawnee, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yeah. Yes. Johnston? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Manon? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item four is communication and proclamations. We have one proclamation. Our council president, Johnston, will read the proclamation. Whereas home health and safety hazards, including physical safety hazards, lead-based paint, radon, mold, pests, and allergens cause or contribute to a wide range of illnesses and diseases, including lead poisoning, asthmas, cancer, and injuries, and whereas lead poisoning was the, has the potential to affect hundreds of Pocatello's children under six, and whereas accidents in the home leave the potential to hurt many of Pocatello's people every year, and whereas there is a risk to Pocatello residents to die from chemicals stored and used improperly in the home, and whereas people die from carbon monoxide poisoning every year, and whereas many families and households are unaware of their home, that their homes can have serious health hazards, and whereas education and awareness about the dangers of unhealthy or unself, unsafe housing can save lives. Now therefore, Ryan C. Blad, Mayor of the City of Pocatello, does proclaim the month of June to be Healthy Homes Month and encourage Pocatello, in Pocatello, encourage citizens and government officials to observe this month with appropriate programs and activities designed to enhance public awareness of home health and safety hazards and the ways families can protect themselves from such hazards. Signed, Brian C. Blad, Mayor of the City of Pocatello. Good. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, I'm Adam Lane, CDBG Program Manager and Project Director for the City of Pocatello Lead Safe and Healthy Homes. We appreciate your support of our goal of educating the community on the importance of healthy homes and most importantly to protect children from the dangers of lead poisoning. In support of Healthy Homes Month, Lead Safe and Healthy Homes will be providing outreach and education events throughout the month of June. On June 19th at 5.30 p.m., we will be hosting a Get the Lead Out Night right here in Council Chambers, where we will present information on how people can make their homes healthy and protect themselves from lead hazards. We invite everyone to attend, and there will be some fun giveaways and prices. Thank you again for your support. When's that event again? Uh, June 19th. June 19th. 5.30 p.m. That's okay. good. Okay, thank you. Agenda item five is the calendar review. Council may wish to take this opportunity to inform other council members of upcoming meetings and events that should be called to their attention. On June 12, 3 p.m. will be a joint cities, county, school district meeting. On June 14 and 9 a.m. will be a study session followed by a budget development meeting. <clears throat> June 21 meeting has been canceled. Mayor and City Council will be attending Association of Idaho Cities Conference. June 28, 9 a.m. will be a budget development meeting. July 5, 9 a.m. will be a budget development meeting. July 5 at 5.30 p.m. will be Council Clarification Meeting. July 5 at 6 p.m. will be a regular City Council meeting. Other events, <clears throat> June 8, Fort Hall Replica Season Grand Opening uh, is at 11 a.m. On June 9, 8 a.m., Parks and Recreation, June Joy in the jo Journey Jog Fun Run uh, will happen. Uh, June 9 at 6 p.m., Gate City Grays Home Game season, season Opener. June 9 through the 16th is Idaho High School Rodeo at the Bannock County, Fair, Bannock County Events Center. June 14 at 6 p.m., a walk with the mayor, trail, trail exploration Thursday at the City Creek Trail System. June 16 at 6 p.m., roar and pour wine walk at the Zoo Idaho. Contact the zoo for details. June 17th is Father's Day at the zoo. Fathers will receive a 50% discount off their admission when they are accompanied with a paid child. June 19, uh, we just heard, is Get the Lead Out event at what time? 5.30. 5.30 here at City Hall. I just added that one. June, it, June is a National Adopt a Shelter Cat Month. Adopt a cat over the, the age of six months from, six month old from the Pocatello Animal Shelter for $25 or a kitten under the age of six months for $35. July 3 and 4 is Independence Day, Independence Day celebration activities and biggest show in Idaho fireworks display at the Bannock County Events Center and Portneuf, Portneuf Wellness Complex. I think we covered all of it. We'll move on to agenda item number six, the public hearing. Proposed fiscal year 2018 budget amendments. This time has been set aside for council to receive comments from the public on proposed amendments for fiscal year 2018 budget. I declare the public hearing open. Ashley Welsh, Senior Accountant. Um, the 2018 budget adopted in August of 2017 was developed with anticipated grants and estimated revenues. The council elects to adopt a restrictive budget and amend in detail for unplanned revenues and expenses. Tonight, the Finance Department is requesting additional budget authority for expenditures related to unforeseen revenues and expenses in the general fund, street fund, cemetery fund, airport fund, library fund, transit urban fund, sanitation fund, ambulance fund, fleet management fund, utility billing fund, wellness fund, education benefit fund, street federal aid projects fund, capital acquisition fund, and the retirement payout fund. On May 10th, I provided a detailed discussion at the study session regarding these amendments. The additional authority is needed for travel and training, retirements, equipment, supplies, various capital projects, and the creation of new funds within the city. The revenue is provided by reimbursements, grants, donations, and excess reserves. 
The total for all the amendments is $2,165,192. This amendment process began with the two required public notices on May 23rd and May 30th in the Idaho State Journal. No action will be taken at the end of the public hearing. Then at the end of, our, of tonight's meeting, the council will consider the amended ordinance. This concludes my presentation. Questions? Ashley, has there been any written correspondence? No. Okay. Thank you. And we will jump down to uh, testimony. Asking for testimony by those supporting the application. Any testimony of those uncommitted to the application? Any testimony of those opposed to the application? Nikki Taysom, 4963 Yellowstone, Chubbuck. Under the Constitution, Article 4, it states, the United States shall guarantee to every state in this union a Republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion. In Article 6 it states, the Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land. The Fourth Amendment states, no person shall be held to answer for capital or other offenses. And then it says, or not be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall provide, I'm sorry, or, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. Sorry, that was Article 5, Amendment 5. This violates constitutional law, as I'm not getting just compensation for my tax dollar, and it's not a form of Republican government either because it's not government by the people, for the people, for the good of the whole. These, these programs actually are breaking us financially. It's a form of social, excuse me, socialism. And I see people making great sacrifices and losses because of these kind of a cost to them, where people are literally losing homes and small local businesses. And to me, that's a bad form of government. Um, we the people are the sovereignty of this nation as one nation under God and indivisible. And as we work together under the laws of God, and he mandated, he directed this constitution to be formed by ways men who were Christian, who prayed and asked for his guidance and were led by him to establish this free nation as a republic. There is no other nation on this earth that has the blessings we enjoy. And we have sacrificed and we've thrown them away to the point of losing all that is sacred almost including the loss of life. I know some very good people who've lost their homes and small businesses. Now even their children are paying the price with the debts that they're burdened with that are unconstitutional. I call on this council to honor the oath you've taken. And it's not just to support the Constitution. You are to obey, uphold, and defend it as the supreme law of this land as it was established by God through our founding fathers, who sacrificed and pledged their life, their fortune, and their sacred honor to establish and my ancestors, who some of which did lay down their life from the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, World War II, Korea, post Vietnam, and now Iraq, another unconstitutional, unconstitutional war with loss of life. I will not uphold and defend or obey socialism, communism, or any false. Thank you. Any others opposed to the Jesus. application? Okay, I don't, there's really not a lot to, is there anything else you'd like to say? Okay, then I declare the public hearing closed. We'll move on to agenda item number seven is the public hearing CDBG program year 2017 annual report. As required by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, this time has been set aside for council to consider any comments from the public concerning a program year 2017 community development block grant, CDBG, consolidated annual performance and evaluation report, CAPR. <clears throat> the report has been available for public review from May 23 to June 7, 2018. After review and recommendation of, the, of approval by the CDBG Advisory Committee, following the public hearing, council may wish to approve the report
report and authorize the submittal, including the summary of any public input to HUD on or before July, June 29, 2018. I declare the public hearing open. Mayor and Council, uh, members, my name is Adam Lane, uh, CDBG Program Manager, Planning and Development Services Department. This hearing is to allow oral comment on the Consolidated Annual Performance and Evalu Evaluation Report, CAPER, for the CDBG program year 2017 that ended on March 31st, 2018. This report is required by HUD to inform both HUD and the community on the activities undertaken during the program year. The report outlines activities that support affordable housing that were undertaken by the city and its housing partner neighbor Works Pocatello, including creation of five new homes, down payment and closing cost assistance, and the re rehabilitation of 27 owner-occupied homes. Other activities include public facility improvement projects for Aid for Friends, Family Services Alliance, New Day Products and Resources, and Band of Youth Foundation. Public service support was also provided to Aid for Friends and the Senior Activity Center Meal Program. The city and its partners leveraged over $1 million in other funding while utilizing just under $500,000 in federal funding and program income. Contracts from these funds are mostly to small local businesses supporting both the community's economy and individual business and people. The city remains in compliance with general CDBG standards and regulations, meeting spending timeliness and within spending parameters for program administration and public services. The draft caper was reviewed by the CDBG Advisory Committee at their meeting of May 15th with a recommendation of its approval and forwarding to HUD. The report has been available uh, to the public since May 23rd. No comments have been received to date. Should any comments be received at tonight's hearing, they will be summarized and included in the caper. Staff recommends the council approve the caper and authorize its forwarding to HUD. Thank you. Uh, Adam, is there any correspondence? No. Okay, thank you. I look for any testimony supporting the application. Any testimony uncommitted to the application. Any testimony opposed to the application? <clears throat> Nikki Taysom, 4963 Yellowstone, Chebec. I oppose this application because it's again in violation of the Constitution. It's empowering socialist programs. We have wonderful local contractors, finance people, things that are in the private sector that should be handling these kinds of things. It's not the government's role to be a property manager or developer or financier. Um, under the First Amendment, it also states, Congress, and therefore no other government, shall make no law respecting establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government for the redress of grievance. I brought that up because I know that CD, um, the Community Development Block Grant has offered some of these public funds to churches and private businesses and individuals my tax dollar going to someone else that I don't get just compensation back for and you're establishing a religion by giving money to whatever faith it is. There's been several. Um, also, under the first article of the Constitution, it says no capitation or other direct tax shall be laid unless in proportion to the census or enumeration there herein um, directed be taken. There hasn't been a budget presented based on a census to what we are being taxed for and have to pay out from public funds as we the people, as the sovereignty of this nation. There's decisions made and money spent for things that we don't even get a voice really on. Sometimes we didn't know what's going on and now things are being approved by judicial confirmation. And so again, because these monies are going to private individuals and churches and other entities that do not fall under that, it's a form of socialism, therefore it's in violation of constitutional law, and you are under oath to not allow that to happen. Um, again, God has said the Constitution is the supreme law of this land, and is guaranteed our liberty and everything that we have under that Constitution, and nothing else, nothing more or less, including laws of man that violate it. If we want to succeed as a nation, that is the only answer. Seek and obey God and the Constitution as he established it. Otherwise, we fail. And that's why we're going down the tubes as a nation right now. We don't need bigger jails, more police, or these programs. What we need is God and restoration of this sacred document in the sacred and holy name of Jesus. 
Thank you. Any others opposed to the application? Um, Adam, would you like to? Okay, then I declare the public hearing closed. Council this items before you. How do you wish to proceed? Mayor, I move that we approve the report and authorize its submittal, including a summary of public input to HUD. Second. We have a motion by Adamson and a second by Lurick. Shawnee, could you please call the roll? Adamson? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Manon? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item eight, public hearing program year 2017 CDBG action plan amendments. This time has been set aside for the council to accept comments regarding the proposed amendments within the program year 2017 and 2018 community development block grant CDBG annual action plans. The amendments were reviewed and recommended for approval by the CDBG advisory committee at their meeting on April 17, 2018. A 30-day written comment period began May 8, 2018 and concludes June 7, 2018. Following the public hearing, council may wish to approve the amendments and authorize their submission, including public comments to the Department of Housing and Urban Development. I declare the public hearing open. Mayor and Council, Adam Lane. Uh, I'm the CWG Program Manager, Planning and Development Services Department. As described by the Mayor, this hearing is the oral comment opportunity for proposed amendments to the program year 2000, 2017 and 2018 action plans. The amendment to program year 2017 is to utilize 2017 funds to complete projects approved within the program year 2018 action plan. Because of the delay in 2018 funding, these projects cannot be completed before the winter months. This am amendment allows us to complete the projects within our short construction season. There are four proposed amendments to program year 2018, the first being to cancel the projects contained within program year 2018 as described earlier. Since these projects will be completed util utilizing 2017 funds, the funds can be made available for other projects. That brings us to the second proposed amendment. The funding uh, made available will be allocated to public facility improvement and public service activities. When 2018 funding becomes available, we will invite community nonprofits and faith-based organizations to apply for the funds to complete needed projects. The third amendment is to provide infill housing service delivery to NeighborWorks Pocatello for the construction of four new uh, single family homes. Because of the rising cost of construction, NeighborWorks Pocatello needs assistance with the funding of these homes. And finally, we made adjustment to the 2018 spending conditions, allowing staff to reallocate funds between activities to accommodate funding needs. The CDBG Advisory Committee recommended approval of these amendments at their meeting of April 17, 2018. Copies of the recommendation have been made available at Marshall Public Library, NeighborWorks Pocatello Life, Inc., the Housing Authority, and here at City Hall, as well as on the website for our interested parties to review. A 30-day comment period began Tuesday, May 8th and concluded on June 7th. No written comments have been received. Following tonight's hearing, the council may wish to accept or amend the committee's recommendation and authorize the amendment submission to HUD. That completes my presentation. Any questions for Adam? Thank you. Adam, has there been any correspondence? No. Thank you. Any testimony of those supporting the application? Testimony, testimony of those uncommitted to the application. Testimony of those opposed to the application. Nikki Taysom, 4963 Yellowstone, Chubbuck. Again, I oppose it because of, one, you're using last year's funds, which shouldn't be left over. And again, they're public funds. They're not the city funds or government funds. They're our funds, and we trust you to use them wisely. Costs of increase because of the inappropriate use of public funds. Um, just as an example, the increase of property taxes, sale taxes, income taxes, taxes everywhere that are violation and violation of the Constitution, public service benefits and welfare, CRP lands, nonprofit donations and funding, increases of fees and licenses and registrations, mandatory insurance, social security, unemployment, all these costs that go to our employers, our homeowners, and those who make people work and build up a town that are here, not in Washington or somewhere else. Um, 
we have become a nation of asking on our knees for grants from the federal government their role is small very small income taxes are actually unconstitutional that needs to be totally reversed and i call on you to take that stop to demand it um, we need to go back to poll taxation and international tariffs that's how this nation was meant to be funded and so this is one more step burden on the people we the people who work our hearts out i ask people all the time how are you doing i'm looking for work all the time people tell me we're surviving i barely have enough to keep my own people going there's people losing their homes and moving into trailers and apartments there's people living in storage units i've talked to them and so this needs to not be happening anywhere in the United States. And again, I call on you, I demand that you do not approve this, do not participate in it, and uphold your oath, and only abide by the Constitution as it was originally established, because even the federal government has changed it from its origination. And it is God that you will account to, and every dead and wounded combat soldier, in the sacred and holy name of Jesus. Thank you. Any, any others opposed to the application? Thank you. Um, would, Adam, would you like to? Sure. Uh, the 2017 funds are available because of um, we received some large payoffs of loans made previous from previous program years. So that's why the funds are available. Super. Thank you. Uh, I declare the public hearing closed. Council this items before you. How do you wish to proceed? Mayor, I move that we approve the amendments and authorize their submission to HUD. Second. We have a motion by Adamson and a second by Lurick. Shawnee, could you please call the roll? Adamson? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Manon? Yes. Thank you. We'll move on to agenda item nine is Riverside Golf Course Irrigation System Improvements. Council may wish to consider approval of the Water Department and Engineering staff recommendations to make necessary water delivery improvements for the 12-inch lumber lane connection, reprogram irrigation controls and purchase and install a 250-gallon surge tank as identified within the amended Riverside Golf Course evaluation provided by Bowen and Collins and presented to the city staff at the May 10, 2018 study session. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve this request. Second. We have a motion by uh, Council President Johnston and a second by Cheatham. Johnston? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Merrick? Yes. Manon? Yes. Thank you, Agenda Item 10. OccuScreen Agreement Transit. Council may wish to consider an agreement with OccuScreen to provide national background checks for Pocatello Transit drivers to provide that provide Medicaid transportation. Transit staff estimates there will be an, in, an initial cost of approximately $480 for the service. Mr. Mayor. Councilman Cheatham. I move to approve agenda item number 10, the OccuScreen Agreement Transit System. Second. We have a motion by Cheatham and a second by Adamson. Shawnee, could you please call the roll? Cheatham. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Lurick. Yes. Manon. Yes. Thank you. CGA Academy SC Use Agreement Parks. Council may wish to approve a use agreement with CGA Academy SC to allow their their use of Indian Hill soccer fields on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays from April 9th through June 14, 2018, and Monday through Friday, July 9th through July 12th. 2018 for youth soccer games practice and clinics subject to legal department review cga academy sc will be responsible for any damages incurred by their use pay applicable fees and provide liability insurance naming the city as an additional insured mr mayor i move that we approve the cga academy sc use agreement subject to legal department review Second. We have a, a motion by President Johnston and a second by by Manon. Shani, could you please call the roll? Johnston. Yes. Manon. Yes. Adamson. Yes. Cheatham. Yes. Lurick. Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 12, Energy Audit Grant Application, Idaho Power. Council may wish to consider the following request regarding an Idaho Power Energy Audit Grant. A. 
application for the energy audit grant in the amount of up to twelve thousand five hundred dollars and if awarded be authorized the mayor to sign the program audit application form outlining the program this grant money will be used to cover the energy audit process to determine potential energy savings and implement implementation costs to save the city money. If the grant is awarded, the city would go through an RFQ process to select an audit company. After the audit has been compiled or completed, staff will submit for 100% reimbursement from Idaho Power. Mr. Mayor. Councilwoman Lurick. I move that we approve the energy audit grant application from Idaho Power and authorize the mayor to sign the program audit okay. application form outlining the program. Second. We have a motion by Lurick and a second by Cheatham. Lurick? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Manon? Yes. Thank you, agenda item 13, grant application airport projects. Council may wish to approve the grant application and allow the mayor to sign the grant offer and any other potential documents if awarded for a grant from the Federal Aviation Administration under the Airport Improvement Program in the amount of $1,312,500 for the purpose of rehabilitating taxi lanes, purchase of a new snowplow blower, replacement of a crash rescue alarm system and performance of a wildlife hazard assessment and rewrite of the airport wildlife plan. The grant will, will require a match of 6.25% of the total project cost to be funded using airport passenger facility charge PFC funds. Mr. Mayor, I'd move uh, approval of agenda item number 13, the grant application for the airport projects. Second. We have a motion by Cheatham and a second by Adamson. Shawnee, could you please call the roll? Cheatham? Yes. Adamson? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Manon? Yes. Thank you. Agenda item 14, an ordinance. An ordinance approving an, amend an amendment to fiscal year 2018 appropriations ordinance increasing the total fiscal year expenditures by $2,165,192 to account for additional revenues, including grant funds received by by the city and to use previously unappropriated cash balance for unanticipated expenses incurred by the city. Council, how do you wish this ordinance to be read? Mayor. Councilwoman Adamson. I move that the ordinance agenda item number 14 be read only by title and placed on final passage for publication and that the entire ordinance be submitted for publication. Second. We have a motion by Adamson and a second by Johnston. Adamson? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Manon? Yes. Jared, would you please read the ordinance? <clears throat> An ordinance of the City of Pocatello, a municipal corporation of Idaho, amending ordinance number 2994, the appropriation ordinance for the fiscal period, October 1, 2017 through <clears throat> September 30, 2018, providing for an increase in expenditures in the general fund, street fund, cemetery fund, airport fund, library fund, transit urban fund, sanitation fund, ambulance fund, fleet management fund, utility billing fund, employee wellness fund, education benefit fund, <clears throat> street federal aid fund, capital act acquisition fund and retirement payout fund, which increases the total fiscal year expenditures by 2165192 providing that the revenue to pay for said increases shall be derived from transfers, grants, unexpected revenues, and previously unappropriated cash balances, providing that all of the portions of the appropriation ordinance number 2994, not herein previously amended in ordinance number 3000, not herein, shall remain in full force and effect, providing that this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from and after its passage, approval, and publication according to law, the rule requiring that the ordinance, that an ordinance be read on three separate occasions having been dispensed with. I declare that to be the final reading of the ordinance. Shall the ordinance pass? Adamson? Shawnee. Yes. Cheatham? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Lurick? Yes. Manon? Yes. Thank you. We'll move to agenda item 15, discussion items. This time has been set aside 
to hear discussion items not listed on the agenda. Items which appear somewhere else on the agenda will not be discussed at this time. The council is not allowed to take any official action at this meeting on matters brought forward under this agenda item. Items will either be referred to an appropriate staff or scheduled on a subsequent agenda. You must sign in at the start of the meeting in order to be recognized. As a reminder, there is a three minute time limit per person and 15 minutes for the agenda item. We'll go ahead and move on. Uh, Nikki Taysom. Nikki Taysom, 4963 Yellowstone. Independence Day is going to be a coming up pretty soon. And I really sincerely thought about things and what's going on around this world. And I was impromptu to share this with you tonight. In 2 Nephi chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Wherefore, this land is consecrated unto him, meaning God, whom he shall bring. And if it so be that they shall serve him according to the commandments which he hath given, it shall be a land of liberty unto them. Wherefore, they shall never be brought down into captivity. If so, it shall be because of iniquity. In DNC 98, he states, And that law of the land which is constitutional, supporting that principle of freedom and maintaining rights and privileges belongs to all mankind. This constitution wasn't just for the America. It was for the entire world. And our founders knew that, if you read their writings. And it just, and is justified before me. Therefore I, the Lord, justify you and your brethren in befriending that law which is the constitutional law of the land. And as pertaining to the law of man, whatsoever is more or less than this cometh evil. I, the Lord God, make you free. Therefore you are free indeed, and the law also maketh you free. Have you ever been without your freedom? Ever. I have. And I give unto you a commandment, that ye shall forsake all evil and cleave unto all good, that ye shall live by every word which before proceedeth forth out of the mouth of God. DNC 101 states, Therefore it is not right, again this is God speaking, that any man should be in bondage to one another. Have you ever been in bondage to someone? Our founding fathers wrote the Declaration of Independence, leaving the very things that have just been approved here. I share it. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds, bands which have commanded them, sorry, connected them with another and assume among the powers of earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, all men, that includes mankind, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Preamble. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and do secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves. Thank you very spirit. much. We'll move on. Andy Moldenhauer. We now live under internet. Thank you. Code. Andy. One tries to police the name of Jesus. Thank you, Andy. The Constitution guarantees me the right to speak without abridgment. Andy Moldenhauer, Pocatello Firefighters, Local 187 President, um, Mayor and Council. I just wanted to take a minute to speak about a couple of recent events that we've had. Um, the first one was the smoke detector campaign that took place last weekend over on the west side of town. Um, we installed 149 smoke detectors in 78 homes. Um, I'd like to thank the Red Cross for putting the campaign on and the and as well as 36 volunteers that came in and helped install and identify where they needed to be um, especially volunteers from the deq boy scouts ibu local 449 and councilwoman linda lurick and councilman jim johnson um, secondly i'd like to thank city councilwoman heidi adamson for attending fire ops 101 in boise on may 19th um, it was a great event, and hopefully you guys have had a chance to talk to her about some of the items that we did there. Um, so that's all I've got. Thank you. 
You scared the daylights out of her. She hasn't said a word since. So <laughs> I don't know what you guys did to her over there. You know, it, it got hot and smoky for a little while. We had to, it really we had did. To have a <laughs> it did. But thank you, Andy, for going with me to that event. And for the two viewers at home that are watching, they, <laughs> truly, we it is amazing what our first uh, emergency responders do. And we really, I can't adequately say in words, you know, and I don't want to also delay our city council member who's trying to catch a flight tonight, but but really, it was a great experience, so thank you. Thank you for going, and, and thank your husband for, for going as well. I mean, it was, it was good to have him there and have him be able to participate and ask some questions. Hopefully, some of the answers he got have been able to fill some gaps with different stuff that you weren't able to, to catch mm -hmm. or were too excited to hear or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. I think we, you have your kids watching you, so we got two viewers, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining us tonight. We uh, appreciate your attendance. I would like to thank the City Council for your work this morning. We had a really good budget meeting, and I appreciate what you've done, uh, done for us. So thank you very much. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.